Welcome to the Pennsylvania Association for College Admission Counseling's Virtual College Fair. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Before we get started with our presentations, just a few quick housekeeping items. The first is that attendees are welcome and certainly encouraged to ask questions to any of the panelists at any time utilizing the Q&A button. You can ask a question to a specific presenter or you can ask a general question to any and all of the presenters. Also, just a reminder that your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. And there are two other blocks of sessions this evening, so please feel free to sign up for those if you haven't already done so. And about one week from today, a recording of this session will be available on that same registration website. Without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our first presenter, which will be University College Dublin. Thank you so much, Christopher. All right. Welcome, everybody. Kate Mila Falcha. My name is Chelsea Weaver. I'm with University College Dublin, or UCD for short. I am based in San Diego, but we do have another representative based in New York who will be your direct contact, and I will share her contact information with you at the end of my presentation. Before I talk specifically about UCD, I will start with a few highlights of Dublin and Ireland. Lonely Planet voted Ireland the world's friendliest country. According to the Global Peace Index, Ireland is the 10th safest country in the world. Dublin ranks as one of the top 10 best student cities in the world, and it's a very vibrant city. 50% of the population is under the age of 34, so it's truly a great city for college students. It's also an accessible city in many ways. It's known to be a very welcoming place. There's no visa requirement as a full-time undergraduate student from the US. It's an English-speaking country. It's easy to travel around the country. And, and it's also well connected to mainland Europe. Dublin is a modern capital city and is home to almost 1200 multinational companies like Facebook, Google, Airbnb, Twitter, and many more, and is a great headquarters for internships and work experience after graduation. An important note on that, if you complete your undergraduate degree in Ireland, you can stay in Ireland to seek employment and gain work experience for one year, up to one year after graduation. Now, a bit about UCD. We are ranked within the top 1% of universities worldwide. We were also ranked the number one university in Ireland by US News and World Report for the second year in a row. We have approximately 19,000 undergraduate students and nearly 30% of our student body is international. And the majority of our international students do come from the US. We have a suburban campus on roughly about 350 acres, and we're located three miles south of Dublin city center. We were ranked number one in Ireland for graduate employability for the last three years, which is of course a statistic that we're very proud of. A little fun fact for you, that we have educated half of Ireland's prime ministers. Our campus is very similar to a traditional US college campus, campus with all the amenities that you're used to seeing in the US, such as a swimming pool, sauna, gym, climbing wall, and various student and academic support services as well. We have libraries throughout campus dedicated to different academic disciplines, and we have over 130 societies and sports clubs, including a few of my favorite societies, the International Student Society, Harry Potter Society, and the Traditional Music Society. We have on-campus housing for over 3,000 students, and we do seek to guarantee housing for incoming undergraduate international students. All students stay in a private bedroom with shared living spaces, so you will not have to share a dorm room. We have food stores, laundry facilities, a pharmacy, and a health center on campus as well. In Ireland, we refer to majors as courses or programs, and it is common to apply directly to the course of your chosen subject, which is known as direct entry. We do not have general education requirements. So if you want to study English and you never wanna take a maths class again, for example, you do not have to. UCD offers over 70 undergraduate degree courses, which are three or four years in length, depending on the course. 
and we offer courses in the following areas, as you can see on the screen. We also have our Liberal Arts and Sciences program, which is our most popular program for US students, as it is most similar to an undecided major in the US, and allows you to explore various subjects for your first year or two before you choose a major. We are on the Common App. Um, we are not on UCAS as we are not lo located in the UK. Um, or of course, you can apply directly on our website. For one application fee, you can apply to up to four of our programs. For admission to UCD, we only review academics. We do not review essays, letter of recommendations, or extracurricular activities. We are currently test flexible for some of our programs for 2021 entry. However, we're not sure what 2022 and beyond is going to look like just yet. And our more competitive programs do require the SAT or ACT currently. You can find all of our entry requirements on our website. And we strongly advise submitting your application before our priority deadline of December 1st, just to ensure that you're able to apply to our more competitive scholarships. Speaking of scholarships, around 80% of our international students do receive some form of monetary award, which is anywhere from 10 to 100% of tuition. For a point of comparison, UCD is typically more expensive than staying in state for college, but less expensive than going out of state or to a private school in the US. We are on the FAFSA and accept US federal aid. If you are currently a sophomore or a junior, check out our high school summer program on our website. Applications are open now, and we are currently planning to host this program this July in person, fingers crossed. It's a great way to explore the option of studying at UCD in the future. We have a 3D virtual tour on our website, and your UCD regional representative is Kendall, who is based in New York. Please feel free to reach out to her via email, and I'll share her email address in the chat as well. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, University College Dublin. Um, just a reminder to any attendees who recently joined us, please do feel free to ask any questions you might have to any of the panelists utilizing the Q&A button. But up next is the University of Essex. Thank you, Christopher. I'll just quickly start by sharing my screen. Hopefully you can all see that. So hello everybody, my name is Emma and I am one of the uh, recruitment representatives at the University of Essex. So in keeping with the six by six theme, I've put together six of my favorite things about the University of Essex. So first up is location. We have three campuses at the University of Essex and they are located in Colchester, South End and Loughton. Colchester um, is the largest of our three campuses and where the majority of our courses are taught. That's a picture of it uh, at the bottom of the screen. Uh, it sits on 200 acres of beautiful uh, award-winning uh, parkland. Um, all three campuses are located within easy reach of London. So if you look at the map, you can see where the three campuses are located. Um, I, in my opinion, it's the perfect distance to London. It's close enough if you want to get into the city and take advantage of everything that London has to offer, um, but far enough away so you really notice the difference in prices. We're approximately 45, 50 minutes away from London, um, from the Colchester campus. Um, a little fun fact about Colchester, it is the UK's oldest recorded town in that image to the left of the map is a picture of Castle, um, Castle Park. So in the town itself, there's some really beautiful Roman architecture. Um, and something that uh, is quite interesting about Essex is we have some of the UK's best weather. So in the UK, we're not really known for our glorious sunshine, um, but located just uh, in the southeast of the UK. We have some of the UK's uh, sunniest days and some of the lowest amount of rainfall. So if going, living somewhere um, dry is important to you, then Essex could be a really good fit. And um, what I love about Essex is the fact that um, it's a real mix of everything. So you can see on the map, we're close to the coast, we're close to the city, we're surrounded by some really beautiful countryside and there's some lovely towns and villages nearby as well. So next up is academic teaching. 
We are rated gold in the teaching excellence framework, so that's the highest accolade, so that's a testament to the quality of the teaching. We're also recognised for the quality of our research, so we're a research-led university. Um, in 2018, we were awarded University of the Year. That's something we were incredibly proud of because we were uh, really recognised for putting students first. We are a university that's really known, well known for our social sciences, so in, in particular politics, sociology, criminology, international relations. These are subjects that we're consistently well ranked for. Our business school is in the top 2% worldwide, and we have a really interdisciplinary approach to our teaching. Um, so it's often possible for you to pick different classes or modules across different departments. We have a huge range of subjects. I can't, I don't have time to go into detail about all of them, but there's a link just at the bottom of the screen if you wanted to explore our subjects in more detail. Okay, so next up is student life. We have over 160 different sports clubs and societies. Some of those range from the more traditional sports clubs and departmental clubs. Um, and we have some really fun musical theater art society. There's a whole load, over 160. Um, we guarantee on-campus accommodation for first-year students, so you get to live on campus, um, and we are seventh to spend um, on services and facilities per student, so we're pumping money, money back into our campus, campuses for students to take advantage of the facilities. A couple of examples would be our brand new STEM centre, and we have a brand new sports arena as well, which has state-of-the-art um, basketball and volleyball facilities. Okay, so next is cost effective. Our degrees are um, in England are three year undergraduate degrees, which is perfect for students that know what it is that they want to major in because you're studying the subject that hopefully you love and you're passionate about from the very first day. Our fees are really competitive. So already that's one year's worth, um, one year's less worth of fees that you have to pay for. You're only paying for three years um, of fees. And they range from approximately 16,000 to just under 20,000 pounds per academic year. We have lots of really great scholarships. Um, our America's Re Regional Scholarship is worth 3,000 pounds towards your tuition. We offer some really competitive sports scholarships as well. Um, and we also offer an IB Excellence Scholarship, which is based on merit and that is automatic. We are also FAFSA accredited, so if you wanted to uh, borrow money from the US um, government, then you would be able to use that to fund your studies in the UK and at Essex. Okay, so next, employability. Um, we have lots of placement year opportunities for a huge number of our undergraduate degrees. So if you're particularly career orientated and you wanted to get um, industry experience whilst you're at university, then a placement year might be a really good opportunity for you. The way that would work is you would do your first and second year at university. In your third year, you would then do an industry placement and you would come back and do your final year of study in your fourth year. So that would take four years of study, but you would be hopefully being paid um, whilst you're getting that experience. 91% of, of our undergraduate students are in employment or further study once they have graduated, so that's a huge number of students that are either working or have gone on to do further study. Employability modules are built into undergraduate degrees and we have all sorts of workshops um, as part of your that you can take advantage of whilst you're at Essex, including CV workshops, there's networking opportunities as well and career events on campus. And something that's so amazing that I love about Essex is if you want to learn a language for free, then you can do that alongside your degree. You can choose one of up to seven um, languages. I think this is my last slide. So very quickly, um, it's such an international community uh, at Essex. We're ranked fourth in the UK for our, our international outlook. It's not just our students, it's our staff as well that are from all over the world and it's a really international curriculum. Almost 40% of our students are from outside the UK. Over 140 nationalities represented on campus. So you will study, live and work with people from all over the world. And those are my contact details. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you very much, University of Essex. Um, so please do attendees, if you have any questions for our presenters, feel free to use that Q&A button. Um, but up next is University of Glasgow. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for giving up a part of your evening to join. My name is Jason Vai. I'm the Senior International Officer with the University of Glasgow. If you can't tell, this accent is not Scottish. It's straight out of Baltimore. So I'm a student from the US who started at a US university and found that the UK system was a much better fit. So if anybody has any questions about how your skills as a US student translate to a UK classroom, 
more than happy to offer up my personal experiences in the UK. Um, so let's pop up to Scotland and Glasgow. So welcome to Glasgow. For any of you who might not know, Glasgow is the largest city in Scotland. Edinburgh is the capital. Everybody knows Edinburgh. Um, and the two cities have a very soft and friendly rivalry between the two. The running joke is that you'll have a better time at a funeral in Glasgow than you will at a wedding in Edinburgh. So Glasgow is kind of the spot for everybody to come in and um, have a fun weekend. In um, addition to the city, Glasgow actually means dear green place in Scots Gaelic. Um, so you can see in this photo here from atop the bell tower at the university, just how green of a city Glasgow is. Um, so if you need to take a break from the hustle and bustle of city life and go hug a tree, you've got plenty of opportunities. In the background, you see the start of the Scottish lowlands. So you can go live your outlander fantasy as often and as easily as you like, for sure. A couple quick facts about the university. We're founded in 1451. We're one of the four Scottish ancient universities and we're the fourth oldest English speaking university in the world. And to complement that ancient tradition, that ancient teaching legacy, we are currently ranked quite well. So we're ranked 67th in the world um, and 14th in the UK. We have over 29,000 students from over 140 different countries. So we're quite used to welcoming students from all over the world into Glasgow. We are a member of the prestigious Russell Group um, Research Collective of of UK universities um, and are in Scotland, there's a four-year degree structure very similar to the US system. So you've still got that very comfortable four-year model that you might be used to. Now for anybody who's not been to Scotland before, uh, Scotland was voted the most beautiful country in the world. I'll show you a couple of pretty pictures, even though nobody can come to Scotland at the moment. <laughs> um, but there's quite a couple of pretty pictures. And I will say that in case I don't get through everything, there is a QR code at the bottom of every screen. So scan that, pop your details in, and that way we can cheat, keep the chat going. But you'll find plenty of activities to do in Scotland. This is taken atop Ben Am at Loch Catron, which is the closest lock to the city. Um, so in the morning you can go for a hike and in the evening you can end up back in the city with all the creature comforts with coffee shops, going to see a gig. Um, so you've got the best of both worlds really. The university is not located in city center. We're over on the West End, which is a little bit of a quieter section of the city, a very student driven section of the city. It's also known as the foodie quarter. So you'll find tons of good restaurants and amazing food selections from cheap takeaway to fancier restaurants if you want to impress your friends and family when they come. Um, there's plenty to do in the West End, including like these very old romantic, uh, European romanticized cobblestone streets that are just too small for cars. So this is where you'll be walking on your way to and from class, passing the independent bookshops and the coffee stores, the patisserie, the boulangerie. Uh, you'll feel very European <laughs> while you're there, but there are plenty of art galleries as well as live music venues um, and plenty of parks for you to take in on your walk. Now the university, um, the main building, it looks like Hogwarts. There's no way to get around it. It's a castle. Um, so we, it's the main building designed by Sir George Gilbert Scott. And it's quite a landmark as far as the Glasgow skyline is concerned. And even though it's an urban campus, the University of Glasgow's buildings, we own almost every single building that you see in this photo. So a couple of buildings that I'll point out are departmental buildings. The main building will be academic and administrative. So you'll certainly have classes in the main building. It's not just there for show. Um, Engineering is down at the bottom of your screen with geography and earth sciences over to the left. If you follow the road to the top of the screen, you see the medical campus just here. Across the street, we have our 13-story library, which currently houses Shakespeare's original manuscripts. So it's a great resource for any literature students that are hoping to pursue that in Scotland. Um, a lot of the academic teachers offices are these old converted Victorian row homes. So you have your meetings with your professors in some of these old converted living room and kitchen, <laughs> just to add that kind of quaint Scottish touch to things. And just across the street here in this blue and green speckled panel building is the Fraser Building. It's a student union where you can find a coffee, um, a lot of the academic services that you might be looking for. Um, as far as subject areas, we have over 500 degree combinations and we offer a little bit of everything except fine art. So we're not going to be a great choice for the fine arts students, but you can double major, major minor, you can single major in a lot of different other areas. Entry requirements, we are very similar to UCD where we are looking for an academic area of, of best fit. You're applying to a degree, not to the university, so we want to make sure that you're equipped academically to excel in the degree that you apply to. So what we're looking for, if you're doing the IB diploma, a 32 to 38 
for your overall diploma points, including TOK, extended essay, any extra points that you might be able to pick up. If you're not doing the IB diploma, don't worry about it. The US curriculum is perfectly fine and we need three tests at AP level of at least at four. Um, you can replace one of those AP tests with either the SAT or ACT. Um, we don't super score and you can only buy one or the other, you can't do both. And then we are test optional for students who have been impacted with their testing availability with COVID. So what we're looking for is a 3.5 GPA on your high school transcript. And we're looking to see that you've enrolled in AP honors or dual enrollment courses relevant to the major that you're looking for. And the last slide from me, looking at cost effective, um, cost benefit analysis, a lot of in-state tuition will give us a run for our money, but especially if you're considering out of state, we typically tend to be much, much, much cheaper. Um, for a higher caliber education. So I'm based in Washington, DC. So if anybody has any questions, please feel free to reach out and hopefully we can chat soon. See ya. Thank you very much, University of Glasgow. Uh, moving into the second half of our presentations, up next is the University of East Anglia. Hi, thank you very much, Brian. Bear me one moment. Fantastic. So thank you very much for joining today. So my name is Graham Weiss. I'm an international officer at the University of East Anglia uh, at UEA, as we're better known. So UEA is a campus-based university home to just over 16,000 students, of which around 4,000 are international students. So it's very multicultural and a very diverse university, which creates a very welcoming and um, very friendly campus environment. We're also a research intensive university located within the Norwich Research Park, um, which is located about a 10 minute walk from our campus and the research is very much embedded into all of our programs at UEA. So just to highlight some key achievements of the university, so we are ranked very highly both in the UK and also in the world, um, being the top 25 and the top 200, and uh, we're also ranked gold for our um, teaching excellence framework, so to assess the quality of teaching at UEA, we achieved a gold award for this, which is a really good recognition of the, you know, the excellence of the, the teaching that goes on at the university. So this is our campus. So as I mentioned earlier, um, we're a campus-based university. So all the facilities that you will need and that you'll need at a modern UK university are located on this one site. So accommodation is located on our campus. We have accommodation accommodation options on the campus, but also slightly off the campus as well. Um, and that's actually guaranteed for you in your first year of study at UEA. So as long as you apply by the deadline, you're guaranteed to be living on our campus. And there's lots of different options that you can choose from um, to we'll find the best fit for you. We have lots of great facilities on our campus as well. So we have a brand new uh, 30 million pound sports park on our campus. Um, it's a you know, fantastic indoor and outdoor sports facilities with lots of competitive and non-competitive sports that students can get involved in. We have our street, which has all of our kind of facilities and amenities that you'd expect at a modern UK university. We have a restaurant, we have um, numerous, about 16 different catering outlets. We have a bank, post office, and lots of facilities there for you to really help you make the most of your time on campus, as well as our 24 7 library leghead right in the heart of our campus next to our very active student union. We also have a medical centre and a dentist located on the campus as well. One of our facilities that I like to talk about is our Sainsbury Centre of Visual Arts. So this is a art gallery located just at the end of our campus. And lots of our students who are doing art um, majors will, will spend a lot of time here studying, but also it's an art gallery open to the public and open to the students as well, um, with lots of exhibitions from all over the world. It's also, you may recognise it, as the headquarters of the Avengers. Um, so it was used in the filming for these films, I believe the Age of Ultron film, we had the Avengers actually on our campus filming, which is pretty cool. So it's an interesting thing to say that you may have studied at a university, which is also the Avengers headquarters. So in terms of entry requirements at UEA, so what we typically look for, um, we run a very kind of bespoke process in terms of entry requirements, but typically we look for IBs or A-levels, um, but for most students in the US, um, if you've done the high school graduate diploma, the AP exams is what we typically look for, around three APs. Um, if you're applying to a specific science, for example, um, we'd look for a background within that science as well. Um, some of our courses will require an interview as well, mainly our health science courses, so please be aware about that. And um, like with most of the universities in the UK, um, applications to UVA are made on UCAS. So obviously with UCAS applications, you'll need to submit a personal statement as part of that application. 
So where we're located, um, so we are in the city of Norwich, which is in the east of the UK. So we are about an hour and a half to, to two hours um, to London by train. So it's a very accessible city. We also have an international airport in Norwich and we're around about an hour to Cambridge. So it's a very, uh, you know, it's easy to get around Norwich, it's easy to travel to and from. Um, and yeah, flying via Norwich Airport, I always recommend for our students is a very stressful um, or a not very stressful way to, to enter um, the country. We also um, about 30 to 40 minutes to the closest beach in Norwich as well. Um, and we have lots of great countryside located around our campus and in the city of Norwich as well to really help you, um, you know, enjoy your time here in the UK. Norwich is also very much a blend of the old and the new. So we have our kind of historic castles and cathedrals. We also have our brand new shopping centres and cinemas, restaurants, all that kind of stuff as well. And we find students here really enjoy their time here very much. And they often want to stay uh, in Norwich because they enjoy it so much. Uh, the city itself is about 15 to 20 minute bus journey from campus. Um, so it is very accessible. And we're located slightly outside of the city in Norwich also known as one of the safest cities in the UK, um, especially for international students as well, um, because our cohort at UEA of students is so multicultural, so diverse, it really kind of spreads out into the city of Norwich and you know, it's really very much a part of the city UEA is and it you know, just creates this very welcome uh, environment. So our undergraduate programmes at UEA, they are three years in length. Um, unless you were to accept a year abroad or a placement year option, which is obviously going to make it four years, other than our health science courses, which can be slightly longer, like medicine, um, for example. Our programs are very flexible, um, so they allow you to take a um, kind of common first year, and then as you move forward in your second and third year, you can then start to choose the modules that interest you most. Uh, they're very cost effective, our programs as well, and um, ranging from around 17 to 21,000 pounds per year of study. Um, in terms of the teaching, you'll probably be getting lots of teaching in terms of um, contact time around 20 hours a week, um, mixtures of lectures, seminars, workshops, all that kind of stuff, as you'd expect. At UEA, we're really well known for our Department of Literature and Creative Writing, International Development and Environmental Sciences. We do have a lot more other subjects that we're very well known for. Just to highlight as well, we have lots of guaranteed um, and application-based scholarships ranging from £4,000 to £8,000 per year of study. So I think that's pretty much all for me. So um, thank you very much for listening. And if you did have any further questions, then my email address is on the screen here if you wanted to reach out to me that way. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yuye. Um, up next will be Newcastle University. Hi, good evening. My name is Thomas and I'm the International Recruitment Manager for North America here at Newcastle University. Newcastle University is based in the heart of Newcastle upon Tyne, which is a very lively, friendly student city. We are the capital of the northeast of England. We're roughly three hours north of London by train um, and only an hour and a half from Edinburgh. Newcastle is a very lucky city. We've got a airport just 20 minutes outside of the city centre and we're also well connected to most other major parts of the UK by direct train. We are known in the UK as being a very student focused city and we're actually ranked as the fourth best student city in the UK and also the most affordable student city in the UK as well. But we're not just a place to come and study for university, we are also a great place to start your career um, and we're a hub for things like innovation, technology, advanced manufacturing and the arts. And from July this year, students studying in the UK for their undergraduate degree will be able to apply for something called the graduate route visa, which means after their studies, they'll be able to stay in the UK for up to two years to start their working life here if they want to. Newcastle has got lots of things to do and see, but it is still quite a compact city. Um, so you can get around pretty much everywhere within the city centre on foot. It's got lots of restaurants, art galleries, theatres, cinemas, um, but we're also really close to some beautiful nature. Um, we've got stunning beaches only 20 minutes away and fantastic architecture. The northeast of England actually has more castles than anywhere else in the country. And this is just an example of some of that wonderful architecture and nature. You can see there that Tymouth, which is only 20 minutes away, has um, one of the best beaches on earth as named by TripAdvisor. We're very lucky that our beautiful green 50 acre campus is actually located right in the heart of the city. So we have the best of both worlds um, when it comes to campus and city life. 
you can uh, also find lots of our accommodation on our campus as well. So it does mean that you could potentially be both living and studying right in the heart of the city centre. You can see the golden shapes in the bottom left and right there are where our buildings are located and the grey shape in the middle there is the city centre itself. Our campus is wonderfully um, old. We, our history dates back to the 1830s and that's reflected in some of our wonderful buildings. You can see the student union building there in the, fall, in the front of the picture. Um, but we also do have lots of modern buildings as well on campus, including this one here, which is the Catalyst, which is home to the National Center for Data and the National Center for Innovation as well. Newcastle has a very strong global reputation. We are ranked in the top 160 universities in the world and top 25 in the UK. And we are a founding member of the Russell Group, which is similar to the Ivy League in the US and includes places like Oxford and Cambridge. We're named top five for student satisfaction amongst international students um, in the UK and also top 10 for graduate prospects, which actually ranks us above UCL, King's College London and the University of Oxford as well. And for students who are environmentally conscious, we're named 11th in the world for our sustainability. We have roughly 27,000 students studying across 300 bachelor's programs and 200 master's degrees across our three faculties that you can see on the screen there. Some of our most popular subjects with US students include things like art, we're named the best place in the, in the UK to study fine art, English language, literature and linguistics, history and archaeology, our law and business schools, as well as things like our natural and environmental science programs. We actually have, uh, we own and operate two commercial farms, uh, which are about 30 minutes out of the city center. So you can study animal science if you're thinking maybe of study, becoming a vet later in life. We also have environmental science and marine science. We actually own and operate our own marine research vessel and marine research base out at the coast. And we also have a whole range of medical science programs. That's the first thing that we taught in Newcastle was medicine. We were established as a medical school originally. We have one of the top 100 medical schools in the world and Newcastle is also home to the Royal Victoria Infirmary, which is one of the top 60 best hospitals in the world and the third best in the UK. And um, we also offer pharmacy, sport and exercise science, psychology and dental sciences as well. In terms of our entry requirements, we are not test optional, but test flexible. So what that means is that we are looking for standardized tests if you have them, but if not, then we are willing to accept things like dual enrollment credits, honors classes, AP classes in place of uh, AP tests or subject tests. We are also looking for roughly 32 points or above in the IB. In terms of tuition, um, you can see there a comparison with our closest ranked international US competitor. Um, and you can see there the overall cost per year uh, on average is in Newcastle is uh, a lot cheaper. Um, and also quite importantly, we have a three year graduation rate of 96% versus a six year graduation rate of 87.5% at that particular US college. We also do have some great scholarships available up to 100% tuition fee discount on some of our, uh, for some of our students. Um, and we do also have sports scholarships as well. We were named outstanding for our student support and we do have uh, pre-application right through to post-arrival support, uh, including things like health and well-being, disability and learning, um, and our careers service is available to students from the moment that they uh, enroll on campus up to three years after graduation. And also because we are a large university, we have lots to offer you in terms of clubs and societies. We're named top 10 in the UK for sports and we've invested heavily in our sports facilities in the past few years. So we have some fantastic facilities for student athletes. We've got loads of great uh, resources on our websites, including uh, campus tours and also on our YouTube channel. You can chat to a current student through our UniBuddy um, option. And if you'd like to speak to me directly, that's my email address. I will also put all of those links in the chat box for you as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Newcastle. Uh, and our final presenter this evening will be the University of Nottingham. I think you're on mute there, Nottingham.
Thank you very much, Chris. Sorry. Um, hopefully you can see my um, PowerPoint screen. My name's Emma Palfreyman. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm your first point of call for students from North America. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to give you a virtual whistle stop tour of, of the University of Nottingham um, this evening. So for those who don't know the UK yet, um, Nottingham is a really friendly safe and vibrant um, city right in the centre of the UK. Um, it's less than two hours north of London by train um, and has a great nightlife and it's also a historic city and UNESCO city of literature. Um, so you can explore the castle, uh, caves and Robin Hood's uh, home, Sherwood Forest, as well as the cultural venues and events that we have in the city. Um, there's actually a local airport called East Midlands, um, 30 minutes away from our campus, um, so you can travel to other European cities um, at very low cost um, and explore the rest of the UK and the continent while you're here. So as a university, Nottingham is a very old university. It was established in, in 1881 as a civic college. Um, it features in the QS top 100 universities and a top 20 UK university and is a founding member of, of the prestigious Russell Group, um, which is the UK equivalent of, of the Ivy League. Um, we rank eighth in the UK for research power um, and hold the highest award in teaching excellence and that's thanks to our inspiring academics um, at the university. In fact, MRI technology um, was developed at Nottingham by one of our academics, Sir Peter Mansfield, who won the Nobel Prize for Medicine. Um, that was alongside Peter Lauterbur, actually, who was a, a chemist from, from the US. Um, Nottingham also has a strong reputation for sports. We're really proud of our, our sporting achievements and our um, university, Sports University of the Year Award. Um, we're actually, we, this is the second award in, in three years, which we're really proud of. Um, and this award is not just based on the position in, in the British University and College of Sports League, but also the facilities that we offer participation, inclusivity. So there really is something um, for everyone, um, whether you're a competing athlete or you just want to practice sports um, in your own time and try something new as well. Nottingham has overseas campuses in China and Malaysia. So this provides a fantastic opportunity for students to study um, part of their degrees or their whole degrees in our, our overseas campuses. We also have a growing alumni network. So there are over 300,000 graduates from Nottingham. And this is a great network to tap into for advice um, and exploring career opportunities all over the world. Now, in a normal year without a global pandemic, we would normally welcome over 47,000 students to all three of our campuses, um, around 33,000 in the UK alone, and normally around 8,000 international students, including our exchange um, students. And we have lots of different research um, and teaching partnerships across the world, including in, in the USA. Nottingham is a campus university. Um, this means you can live on campus and we guarantee accommodation for all our international students for the duration of your course if you wish to, to stay on campus. Um, as you can see, it's a beautiful green campus. It's won a sustainability award for the last 17 years. And many of the buildings around the outside are student dorms. So you can live there and, and walk to your classes. And there's a real sense of community on campus as well. So it has everything you need here, all, all everything you need for studying. Um, our teaching hospital is here. There are health centers and dentists on campus, libraries, lots of study space and, and lots of green space to relax, cafes, bars, and, and even a hotel and conference center. And this is only 15 minutes away from the city center um, by tram. Our Jubilee campus is 10 minutes away from this campus. So if you're in the top right hand corner, you'll see some small red buildings. This is our business school, um, School of Education, Sociology on Computer Science, which is also an award winning campus. Um, and we have a campus dedicated to biosciences um, and our purpose built vet school, which is Sutton Bonington. This is also a very green campus in a rural area. Um, 
and there's a working dairy farm on this campus and again you can live here and with all the sports facilities as well on on each campus Nottingham has five faculties. So here are the faculties that, um, that we offer. We offer programs at all levels in these faculties. So arts, engineering, medicine and health science and social science. So that's everything from business and finance, economics, pharmacy, engineering, law, sociology, just to name a few of our, our strongest subjects. Life sciences and medicine has a world-class reputation and is ranked 75th in the QS world rankings. Pharmacy is one of our strongest, is fact, in fact our strongest subject um, and we're fifth in the QS world rankings and that forms part of the university's history um, because a graduate from our school of pharmacy and a group of researchers from a famous chain of pharmacies in the UK called Boots uh, discovered ibuprofen. Now, in terms of entry requirements, um, we look for um, APs and IB normally, but please feel free to contact me um, if you want more information about our courses um, and the entry requirements as well. And in terms of uh, employability, we are a top 70 world um, university, so employers um, target graduates from Nottingham and they visit the campus um, to meet and, and network with, with students while they're here. And this is just a selection of some of the scholarships that we offer for undergraduate um, students. So for high achieving students, you can apply for these scholarships, including two separate sports scholarships for the, those students who are competing as well. And we're a FAFSA partner, um, so you can apply for federal aid. We have over 300 clubs and societies for our, our students, so you can get involved in whatever activity you like. Um, so please feel free to contact me. I think I've run out of time, um, but I'd be delighted to set up a one-to-one -one, um, chat after today. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much, University of Nottingham. Um, and thank you to all of our panelists this evening for your great and informative presentations. We do have a couple minutes remaining, so attendees, if you have any questions, please feel free to send those through via the Q&A, and we'll also uh, maybe take a minute and do a quick round of questions here ourselves. Uh, so I would pose the following question to you. Uh, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus, or what's one piece of advice you have for a student looking at international or colleges outside the U.S.? And let's start with UCD. Perfect. I'd say my number one piece of advice would be to keep your options open. Um, definitely check out the online virtual tours and be open to new experiences because you really, you're, you never know when you're going to find your dream school. Hey, thank you. Uh, University of Essex. Um, I have gone with my favourite event or tradition on campus. So at Essex, every year we have an event called One World Essex, which is basically a week long party that celebrates all our international uh, cultures. There's all sorts of activities that go on on campus. It starts off with a parade of flags on campus. There's an international food festival. There's CV workshops to help with employability for international students. And then it finishes off with a huge international party. And if I can be really cheeky and just offer one piece of advice, it would be um, for students to talk to current students. So I think this was mentioned by one of the other universities, but um, if you are interested in a particular university, then do um, talk to current students, ask them about their experiences, particularly if there's a subject you're interested in, find out what their experiences are. Great, thank you. Uh, Glasgow? Yeah, and uh, Glasgow in the building that looks a lot like a castle. There's two different courtyards and they're very well manicured and maintained because it's a student superstition that you do not touch the grass until you take your final exams <laughs> for fear of failing. So graduation is held inside the castle and that's the time when all the students get to actually plod on the grass that is beautifully maintained except for graduation. Um, and a fun fact, I think um, for anybody considering full-time degree, it's a, it's a lot to take in and a lot to consider. Um, so if a full degree internationally doesn't really work out, please look at study abroad options. There are so many different opportunities for you to go abroad at some point in your career, and it's the easy at some point in your academic career, and it's the easiest time for you to go. So go at some point, even if it's not full degree. Great, thank you. UEA. 
Uh, yeah, um, so I'm going to probably go for my favourite tradition on campus. It's actually going to dig out one of my colleagues who's in here today. So it's Derby Day that UEA has competing against the University of Essex. So um, once a year, UEA uh, sports teams at UEA will compete with sports teams at Essex, either on UEA's campus or on Essex's campus. Um, and we've won it, I think, like five times in a row now, I think it is. Um, so yeah, that's my favourite event. It's a, you know, it's a really great, you know, all the students come together to not just take part in sports, but also to watch the sports and watch their, their fellow students compete. Um, and the universities come together really nicely. So yeah, I'd say that's probably my uh, favourite event on our campus. Great, thank you. Newcastle? Uh, so mine's actually relatively similar to Graham's as well. Um, so we have a tradition of um, um, boat racing in Newcastle, rowing, sorry. Um, and uh, we compete against Durham University, which is a university about 10 minutes uh, away from Newcastle. And every year when they have the race, it's on the River Tyne, which runs through the heart of the city. Um, and it's just a really great atmosphere, lots of um, friendly rivalry between Newcastle and Durham. And if you've watched it, it's quite similar to the Oxford Cambridge boat race as well that happens. Great, thank you. And Nottingham. Um, I would probably go for a favourite place on campus or one of the, the most beautiful buildings on campus. And that's the Trent building that, I, that we showed in, in the um presentation it's got such an amazing view um it's such a grand building a listed building and students can relax there and walk around the lake go on the boating lake as well um and go to the cafes um it's just it's it's really difficult to choose some of the such beautiful places on campus um and my advice would be the same as as emma's actually um we all have current us students at our universities and they're the perfect people to speak to they've been in in student shoes already they um they have first hand experience of applying um and know what life in the UK and student life is like. So I would go for contacting a current student as well. Great, thank you. Uh, thank you again to all of you for your great presentations. And certainly thank you to all of our attendees for joining us this evening. Before we wrap up this session, just a few quick housekeeping items. When you close your window, you will receive a very quick four question survey that we ask that you take a minute and complete. There are two other blocks of sessions this evening, so please feel free to sign up for those. About one week from today, a recording of this session will be available on that same registration website. Uh, but thank you again to everybody. Uh, students, good luck in your college search. And I do just want to add, I see a couple Q&A questions coming in at the last minute. Don't worry, all of our panelists will receive a transcript of your questions. So if they haven't answered them right now, uh, they will be able to answer them later. Uh, thank you again, everybody, and have a great night.